Hello, everybody. So as many of you know, I have a little bit of a leadership series, and I finally have dragged my dad into participating into one of these. For those of you that don't know, my dad is a dairy farmer in Wayne County, Ohio. And if you think that I know anything about leadership, you should um, know that I get a lot of it from my dad. And so I'm really excited that I finally convinced him to join me for one of these things. But without further ado, Dad, can you go ahead and just introduce yourself a little bit? My name is Kurt Steiner. I'm a sixth or seventh generation dairy farmer in Milton Township, Ohio. We, uh, I'm the oldest of five boys. I've lived on the farm most of my life. I did graduate from Ohio State and worked eight years in industry before I came back to the farm. And currently we milk uh, 650 cows three times a day, farm about a thousand acres, which keeps us busy. So how did your daughter end up wanting to go to law school if you're a dairy farmer? She probably saw the bright side of it and decided she didn't want to work as many hours as we have to work. Oh, are you saying That's lawyers true. don't work very many hours? No, they, they just work <laughs> smarter hours, I guess. They, work, they get paid more for their hours, probably. Probably. <laughs> so um, I think that there are some people, unfortunately, that might not equate farmers with leadership. However, I grew up on the complete opposite end of the spectrum where everything I ever knew about leadership came from watching you be a dairy farmer. And so for those that might not be as familiar about farming or all the leadership that goes into it, what, how can you speak on that aspect a little bit of why leadership even matters in agriculture? Well, it's a, there's a lot in that question, Nicole, but it just seems like, um, Anymore with agriculture, it's it's years ago, it used to be that everybody farmed and now not many, many generations of people don't have farming in their families. They don't have it in their background. And well, so I mean, grandparents don't even farm anymore. Right. Grandparents aren't farming. And so if I speak to groups and I ask how many people are from farms or their grandparents farms, everybody will raise their hand if you ask them about their grandparent. But very few will raise their hand if you talk about their own parents. And so our industry needs leaders to talk about our industry, to educate. And so many farmers don't want to do it. They just want to take care of the soil, take care of their animals. And uh, some of us have to be willing to reach out and do this type of things. And I think that's twofold. One, why are people farmers? Because they're passionate about farming. And two, you already hit on it. Farmers work a lot of hours. Do you have a lot of hours to be out there being a lead, all these extra hours of leadership available to you? No, our day starts at four and a lot of times doesn't end until way after four or five, six o'clock at night. And so there isn't a lot of time left for that stuff. And, and uh, unless you have a farm that's big enough and you've got a corporate structure that allows you to get away and do some of those things, you, um, you can't devote much time to leadership. Oh yeah. And this is as you're exhausted right now, as it's after nine o'clock and I've drugged you into doing this. And this is your half hour before you get to wind down before you go to bed, because I know you have to get up early to feed in the morning. What time do you have to wake up tomorrow? And why 3 40, is it 3 45. And why is it why is tomorrow a busier day for you than some other days? Well, because on Sunday mornings my brother and I take turns being off and uh, one of us has to feed the cows. And so it's my turn to feed tomorrow morning and I have to get a good start so I can get done to leave a little time to go to church with the family and uh, have an eventful day. Awesome. So just to keep this short, I wanted to make this video about a little bit more particular into raising children on the farm. And I think one thing that is important for leadership within agriculture is passing it on to the next generation. And farming is long hours. I am going to law school. How do we get our sons and daughters to want to be involved in the farm? And I know that I have two brothers, Christian and Zach, that both want to be involved in the farm but are very different. How have you raised them to be interested in the farm and want to be involved? Well, the first thing is we have to get our, make sure our children want, if they want to come back to the farm, provide an avenue for them to do so. They have to understand that it's, it's a business. We run this thing like a business. This isn't a, like it used to be years ago when dad was in the barn in the morning, dad was in the barn at night, and dad was working all day long. We've tried really hard in our operation with our smoking schedule and structure to Leave a lead a life that we work hard, but we also never missed any of our kids' activities and things like that. And so we could uh, we could always be there for our children when we needed to be. 
however, um, raising boys and, and yourself on the farm has, has been a challenge in the fact that some, everybody has a different interest and some like Christian likes the cows. He likes to farm. He likes to lay the land. He just likes to be here and enjoys the work where Zach is more intense. He likes the business side of it a little bit more, probably a little less hands-on, but, um, you, you realize that and you, you know, their strengths and you try to mold a team that, that, um, is good for, for both, for the whole family. And then we, speaking of team, we do have a team of structure of people who, who support us, our veterinarian, our banker, our financial advisor, our nutritionist. And so, as you can hear, this is, this is like a business. This isn't just a family farm where dad makes all the decisions. We surround ourselves with a lot of people. And the kids see that and they want to be part of that. They want to be part of a team that has a business structure. You mentioned a lot there that we could make a lot more videos down the road on, but I want to like tune in on what you said about the boys being different. And one, they have to understand that it's a business, but I think it's, I would assume that it's challenged while you want your kids to be involved. You've also put a lot of work and effort, tears, sweat into this farm. And it has to be a little bit scary to pass them on or trust, or maybe that's not the right word, but how much rope do you give your kids to make decisions or how do you make that decision or how do you make sure that you're preparing them so that they can make those decisions and be successful? Because I assume you want them to be successful. Well, you do. And and you, you have to, you have to give them jobs and opportunities and leadership positions where they have to, to, to learn to make decisions and you can't make all for them. Um, But when we have our our management meetings, we ask them to come to the table with, some things that they've had to work on and prepare for so they can present to, to the group what their responsibilities are. And then an example um, of one of those things. Well, like Christian, for example, is in charge of calves and we've had some issues with the calf program and he's done a nice job of um, putting together a structure of weighing calves when they're born, looking at weaning weights when they're done. He likes to bring those numbers to the table mm-hmm. and it shows our team that he's doing well. We, we, we can, uh, benchmark those numbers against other farms to do the same thing so we get a good feel for where they're at and um so so that's an example where he's starting to develop his own leadership big picture we we just don't let people come onto the farm and be owners in the first day you know we have a kind of a family policy you have to work at least three years before you can even be considered to be a partner in the farm that shows some dedication on your behalf to the operation so there's little things that we can do to to try to, but the, the big picture is it has to be fun. They have to enjoy it. They have to understand it's, it is not just a way of life, but it's a, it's an occupation. And no matter what job you choose to do, you have to be all in. And, uh, and we expect that out of them here at the farm also. That's, I love how you said that rather than trying to teach him Christian, maybe everything about everything all at once, you've given him like a very specific role and he's been able to see growth. And he also, it probably, he gets a sense of pride in that. He wants it to be successful and gets to see what that looks like, but also having responsibility that, Hey, you're in charge of this and we're going to see what the results are. How do you, I think the other thing that I want to touch on before we're done today is there has to be some tension being in a family, right? Like you, you're being in a family, but also working with your family, you live together, you work together. How do you provide feedback to your own children when it comes to the farm? Or how do you coach your children so it's not, oh, it's just dad nagging. Clearly all of us really respect you, but how have you developed that respect? And now moving forward, how do you provide feedback without there being a lot of, without there being that conflict? Well, it can happen two ways. One, you know, direct feedback from, me, from myself to my kids. Uh, whether we go to breakfast or whatever we do to have those discussions off the farm, that's one thing. But also, um, we sort of set up our operation that our nutritionist is our team leader when it comes to our management meetings. And if something needs to be said a little more direct, I can tell the, the leader of the group and he can kind of give that feedback back in a meeting. So it doesn't just come from me all the time. It, it does come from the big picture, the team, and um, it's not you versus them. It's hey, this is our goal, and we're not meeting that. Yeah, goal. right. And we don't want to be the guy all the time dropping the hammer to say, you know, this isn't because there's a lot of reasons why things sometimes don't work out, and we can't be dis- you can't discourage. You have to encourage, and uh, and that's what we try to do. So at the end of the day, when they are done and they 
go in the house at night, they feel like that, you know, they've given through my actions, they know I'm out there trying hard every day. And a lot of time, and most of the time they do too. That's awesome. So last question before we wrap it up is, is it easier to manage your sons and daughter or your other employees and why? Well, it's more fun to manage your kids because you know <laughs> that they're growing and, and they're, they're getting, they're, they're in the long run, they're benefiting from your knowledge and that's good. Um, employee, there's a fine line between ownership and not owning and, and what they want to do and not do and Sometimes it doesn't work out the best, but if somebody has a interest, a family interest in mind, they'll usually take that push and uh, want to do best for what's best for the operation. Uh, so the answer to this question, um, be smart when you answer this question. Who's been your favorite employee all of all time? Oh, Nicole Steiner. Yeah, Gaffer I know the company. best cash feeder yeah. of all time. Best cash feeder. I've been cash right, more times than anybody else on the farm. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Dad. Love you. Love you. Bye. <laughs>